Hey everyone. So I've had this coil winder. I bought it about three weeks ago and just thought I'd do a quick video on how to use it and kind of a general review. So to get started, I've needed a coil winder for a few years and finally just figured I'd buy one. Um, I searched benchtop coil winders and I could really only find two that I liked. There's not a lot of options out there. And it came down to this one and one from um, UKCNC. And I bought this one um, just because I'm only going to be winding maybe 20 coils a year. And theirs is four times the cost. Now these ones, uh, they're on eBay from multiple sellers. They're also on AliExpress and Alibaba. Um, they come out of China, obviously. And since they come out of China, I, I kind of had some concerns about the instructions and the quality of them. I found some videos on YouTube showing them used in coil winding factories. So I figured, oh, okay, well, if they're using them there, they must be, they must be okay as far as quality goes. Um, but the instructions was still a problem. Every seller I found that was selling them uh, had instructions in their descriptions, like on eBay and I couldn't make sense of any of the instructions. So I bought it thinking, hopefully I can figure it out on my own, and I did, it wasn't too complicated. There was also one video on YouTube showing step-by-step uh, -step how to use them, but it was all in Chinese. So we'll just get to it, and I wanna keep this video short if I can. Um, pros and cons, like I said, they're affordable, they're affordable compared to other workbench size models. Programming is actually really simple once you figure it out. It doesn't require a computer to operate and you can save up to 999 different programs. So you could do segmented coils, you could do any number of multi-layer coils, different sizes, different numbers of turns. You can save up to 999 configurations. You can wind large coils. I'm calling this here the feed arm. I'm not sure if that's the proper term for it, but it's got a travel of 110 millimeters, which is about four and three eighths inches. And everything on here is widely adjustable, as you can see. All you do is break the Allens loose. You can move them, change the angles of them. Uh, cons, I'm in the US where we use the American wire gauge and this machine, everything's in millimeters. It's not really too big of a deal though. Uh, when I got it out of the box, <clears throat> I came with this. This is basically a, a tape spool holder. And I'm not going to use that, so I keep it out of the way. Otherwise, it's right here, kind of in front of everything. Also came with a foot switch that I'll probably never use. And came with a few extra felt pieces where the wire goes through. And just some basic tools there. So, oh yeah, it does not include an arbor shaft to mount the bobbin you're winding on. When I got out of the box, this was all there was. Uh, I went to Home Depot and bought this. This is an 8-inch bolt, half inches in diameter, or half inch diameter, sorry. And it's 13 threads per inch. Got it home, cut the head off, but then it wouldn't fit inside the hole in here. So I took it on my lathe and I turned it down to 0 0.470 inches. That gave me a nice tight slip fit in there. And I made these little uh, centering cones on the lathe as well. They're just Delrin that I had. Does not have a tension system or nozzles. So you can see how I've got the wire. I don't know if that's right, uh, but it seems to be working now. I figured through trial and error, I'll learn what's best. These little blocks here, I can get it to zoom in on them. You can see the little grooves machined into them for different wire sizes. There's only six or seven holes there. This is 30 gauge wire and I notice it's even got quite a bit of slop in it. So it would be nice if they came with more of those. Um, but in the future, maybe I'll just buy some nozzles and clamp them in that between those blocks. So nothing, there's nothing really bad about it. Um, just things you got to work around. And since there's no software, it will not make calculations for you. Say you wanted to wind a thousand turns on this and you needed to know the outside diameter and the resistance that it would be uh, with, say, 30 gauge wire. Well, it won't tell you that. But if you get online, just search Aircore Calculator. You'll find them. They're free, easy to use. 
indicator lights, I won't go through any of that. Button functions, some of these I left blank. Uh, either I don't know what they do or I don't need them. And we'll just get right into winding. So if you want to save the program, as soon as you start it, you're going to press start step and assign a number to it. And then you're going to go programming like you would any other coil. And we'll do that right now. Turn the power on. It always moves to the home position when you first turn it on. Now, we're going to ignore this, say that was a zero. And we're going to save a new file. This is going to be our first one. We're going to press start step one and enter and now it's saved ready lights on turns lights on when we press edit and enter the shift light comes on now the shift is the starting position we can use these arrows right here to move the feed arm as you can see it move to the start position um, i've been using a little straight edge with a point on it to line that up just right i'll do that right Okay, not sure if you can see that, but it's where I want it. So to go to the next step, I'm going to press enter. Notice the light changed, now it's on width. That's the width of the bobbin. And I can either just measure it with dial calipers, or once again, I can use the arrows, which is what I'm going to do. And I'll use my straight edge again to line it up. Okay, so that's lined up. Now say I just measured this, and the measurement was 29.86. I just type in 29.86. And then press enter. Now the pitch. That is the wire diameter, but let's say you only wanted to wind 10 turns on here. You could just do the math and then put in whatever number you need, and it'll evenly space them out. Um, for me, I'm doing a tight wound coil, so that's the actual wire diameter, 0.270 millimeters. We'll press enter to go to the next step. Turns, oh, let's say I want 365 turns. Press enter. Now, S slow means start slow. That means if I put in five here, the first five turns are going to go at a really low RPM. Then the rest of it's going to go at a high RPM. Now, E slow means end slow. So if I put a 5 in here, that means the last 5 turns are going to go slow. HS means high speed. This is kind of weird because you can't just put in the RPM you want. And somewhere in the software in this thing, it changes depending, I think, on the wire diameter or the pitch you put in. So I wrote this chart down, but then when I did a different setup with a different size wire, all these numbers changed but basically the the max number you can get is 1650 rpms on the high speed setting and on the low speed everything I've tried so far was just a hundred rpms um, the instructions say that's adjustable but I haven't figured that out yet so not a big deal though 100 rpms is slow enough for me anyways the high speed we've chosen 15 so if we use the high speed, we're going to put a zero on the low speed and vice versa. The fun setting, I have no idea what that does. Uh, if you figure it out, post in the comments, that'd be great. Press enter one more time, now we're back to the shift light. Press edit. Now the ready light, the turns lights on, means we're ready to start winding. Oh, but we have one other problem here. When the feed direction light is on, it's going to start from the inside or the left side and feed to the right. So we need to get that back to the start position. All we have to do is press start. And the reason why it was out there is because we used the arrows when we were doing the width of the bobbin. If we just put the numbers in, it won't need to move and it'll already be in that position. Then you only need to press start once and it'll start turning. So let me get this coil this wire hooked up and we'll wind this coil. Okay, I just use a piece of double stick tape to hold that on and we'll press start and watch the first five turns go slow and then it'll go full speed after that. Here it's counting the turns. I push the RPM button it shows me 1000 RPM. And you see it's winding pretty good. 
been having problems when it gets to this edge, though. Now that wasn't too bad. It may be the slop in that hole. I'm not sure. And see, then the last five turns go slow, and it's done. Shows me my number of turns. Um, if I have it on auto home, which I don't use, this will move all the way back to the home position. And I don't want to do that because it'll drag that wire across. Another thing, winding direction, that's pretty obvious. Um, with the light on, it turns the way that it did. Um, Counterclockwise, with the light off, turn clockwise. And that's all you need to know, really, to wind a multi-layer coil. So to go through it one more time, turn the unit on. And if you're going to save it, you just press start step. Say you're saving it as uh, number one. Press enter. Then you're going to press edit and enter. Your shift, that's your start position, your width, your width of your bobbin. The pitch, the diameter of the wire, or the spacing between the wires you want to use. Number of turns. Start slow. End slow. High speed, low speed, and fun, whatever that one is. Press enter one more time to get back to the shift light. Press edit. Press start. That's all there is to it. Hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.